Hey guys, so this here bringing you another video. Now, very quickly before this commentary begins of one of the best Syndras, I just thought I'd give a shout out to my second channel. A lot of you probably don't know it exists. I don't do a lot with it because you can see the upload schedule. We did one yesterday, a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. But I just thought I'd give the shout out because this video um, is relevant if you like TFT, League of Legends, stuff like that. Um, so... I uploaded it on this channel because I didn't think this type of video was warranted for the main channel. But if you're interested to go watch me unbox some of the new little legends uh, for TFT, go in the description down below. And yeah, feel free to subscribe to the, the second channel. Ding the bell if you want to. And there's going to be upcoming content. You can see I'm saying goodbye to my current car. My new car should be here in the next month or so. We'll be doing content on that. Uh, and then I'm also, I've also got plans of series like when Planet Zoo comes out, I'll be doing a series on this channel too. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the actual commentary for today, which is of one of the best Syndras. Uh, well, on, it's the best Syndra on EU West and one of the best Syndras in the world. So it is a person called Shriek Le Brave. Um, and yeah, they're, they're one of the best Syndras. So the reason why we're kind of checking out Syndra today is because Syndra just got buffed. Her Q damage just went up by 10% to champions. It was 15%, I think, bonus damage. It's now 25. And also her E, I think, got a change to it as well. Maybe damage as well. So this video is going to be like watching one, a good Syndra. Secondly, is Syndra good? You know, in this game, she's against Silas, who is known as a very good mid laner right now. Very hard to kill, very hard to shut down. So how does Syndra do? One thing is noticeable, by the way, and even in my games, in Diamond 1, etc., whenever there's Syndras, they always run Teleport. Like, always. I, I don't know why, because I would always kind of assume they'd run Ignite. Nope. They run TP. Uh, so just to quickly go over before the game begins, her runes. She is going Electrocute. Then she's going Taste of Blood. She is then going Eyeball Collection. And then she's going Ravenous Hunter. Um, so it's about healing, apparently. And then she's going Sorcery as her second. Mana Flow Band. Transcendence with then adaptive damage, adaptive damage, and then magic resist in the little runes that you can pick. Starting item is a Doran's Ring with obviously two health potions, and she's against a Silas that has Corrupting Potion. Maybe a weird thing is the Silas on the enemy team is not running Conqueror, they're running Electrocute. That's a bit rarer nowadays for Silas, so that's a bit weird. And obviously, you can see in top lane, we have an allied Pantheon, which, by the way, Pantheons, and again, remember the content that you watch sometimes on this channel is a few days old, and a few days can change a lot. I still think the Pantheon's bad, but they are starting a lot of the Pantheon players to work out. Our scaling is terrible. Uh, we have to do something about that, and what they're doing is that a lot of them are running Conqueror. Because that actually gives Pantheon a little bit of scaling. Um, so yeah, that's worth noting. Um, right, so let's see how it goes. So I'd expect the Syndra to be relatively good at farming. Silas going aggressive, going to get the second chain, he misses it. A uh, little bit on the back foot, the uh, Syndra at the moment. Uh, has to be said, but you'd expect that maybe in the first few levels. She is looking for them Qs to land on the Silas whenever possible, which I'd expect. Um... Because basically you want like to double up with your Q or Syndra. You don't want to waste too much mana. So if you can wave clear with your Q as well as hit your opponent with it, then it's like, it's bonus, right? Um, so that's good. So evenish farm. Again, we're, we're mainly going to be focusing on mid lane. And as always, we're watching one of the best EUS player, well, the best EUS Syndra player by the, the website called League of Graphs uh, that they rate them apparently. Um, again, not sponsored. That's just the website I use. And um, well, yeah, one of the best Syndra players in the world. I think maybe in the top three. Uh, I think they were actually second. I think the number one Syndra player was actually on a Taiwan or something. And again, remember, this player might actually be the best Syndra player. Because yes, yeah, stats wise, that Taiwan player is technically the best. But that's the server Taiwan. If that Taiwan player came over on EU West, which is known to be a harder server, would they do as well? Those are the type of things you've got to think about. So whenever you're watching or you're looking at people, I would recommend to kind of stick to the servers um, that are known to be quite challenging. EU West is known to be one of the hardest servers in the world. Korea, obviously, as well. I'd mainly stick to those two, if I'm honest. Again, that's not just me saying it. That's like the, the pro scene and everything in general kind of agrees with those two servers are the best by quite a bit. Um, again, China might be good, but we don't have information on China, unfortunately. It's it's its own thing. Um, so uh, websites like League of Graphs and stuff, I don't think get the data from the Chinese servers. Um, but yeah. Right, so 
Uh, farm's doing well, even as farm in mid lane. And I will, one thing I will say with Syndra, and, you know, am I thinking about picking her up again? We might try her, and that's why I was kind of tempted to watch this, uh, watch a video on her. I want to see what she does, when does she start going aggressive, and all that stuff. Um, but Syndra, for some reason, I have always found her very easy to get high farm on. Um, I don't know why, and obviously farm is not my strength in League of Legends, you guys know that. But yeah, I've always ended up with good farm scores when I'm playing Syndra. It's just something about the champion, I think. Um, she's got very good wave clear with her spells, and yeah, you don't want to use your mana too much on spells, but you end you you do end up doing that. Um, and yeah, this Syndra seems to be quite com you know confident that she's landing even just the auto attacks, not relying on her spells to get farm. And when she's just you know getting caught out like that, she then uses the abilities. Oh, the tower's about to kill a minion. Oh, I'll press W on it, save it, and then use that to kill a different minion. So just yeah, generally nice and clean Syndra play. Nothing overly special. The first aggression play coming out, uh, Silas on the back foot will manage to get away. And as you'll probably notice there, Silas getting that little bit of a heal uh, with the corrupting potion. Obviously he has got the potion rune um whatever the hell that's called again i don't remember but yeah right so i'm well she's gonna go back now so she's finally oom um build wise i'd expect a relatively standard build meanwhile in bot side lots happenings kaisa dies uh zin gets a return kill pantheon kills his lane solo but if i'm honest like you'd 100 percent expect a pantheon to be a karma um if he doesn't there's something very much gone wrong um, and it's Tank Karma as well. So yeah, that, that should be a relatively free lane for Pantheon. Let's be honest, Tank Karma's free for everything. Uh, it's just eventually it's annoying to kill a Karma, but by then, hopefully Pantheon will be in a state that he could then roam with his ultimate. That's the point. All right, so level six is starting to be a thing. Silas hits six a little bit before the Syndra and instantly steals her ultimate. But Syndra right now has the health advantage. With burst, Silas can't like think he's, you know, safe too much. So, uh, yeah, we want to start seeing the aggression level. So if you notice the build, which is very important by the Syndra, build shows what someone wants to do. So Syndra went back. She bought. So here's the aggression. Big damage. Doesn't get the kill so far. Doubt she's going to get it. Pantheon ulting in. Doesn't get anything from that. That was a bit weird. Um, but you look at the build. So she went aggressive on Silas then. Is that surprising? No, because she bought boots and she bought a blasting wand. No sustain. At all. Meanwhile, Kazix might be on the back foot. Could get stunned here. This might be a bad move by this Kazix. Is a bad move by that Kazix. Silas is returning. Does flash in. Does get a return kill. Karma's walking down, but don't really care about that. But yeah, okay. One for one. Pantheon should have maybe walked away a little bit quicker. But that's still a overall, I'd say, a decent play. Um, but yeah, so remember, build shows intent. If someone is buying a cull and a corrupting potion guess what that person probably just wants to farm and you know that uh, but if they're buying all damage and no sustain prepare for them to be aggressive very quickly after coming back because they can't they can't uh, afford to just be sitting back and getting poked down because they haven't bought sustain they have to go aggressive to make that work uh, so she will farm this and i presume go back again uh, it's going well in the bot side and uh, again the gold right now is slightly in the favor of the enemy team by well it's it's even now but they're 200 to 200 gold ahead at any one time um but yeah so far does get stopped that's a bit bad by uh, syndra not paying attention there but yeah so far so good i'd expect a relatively standard build by the syndra so ludens uh, into probably Morella Nomicon. Pretty standard. There's not a lot of options you can do with Syndra. And if I'm honest, Riot not that long ago, you know, changed mage items. And the idea behind it, meanwhile, Pantheon might be getting Dove. Three man Dove. He, if he does, he have ult? Uh, he doesn't have ult. He might be able to survive. He's got his E, which is a big deal for a tower dive if he does it well. So yeah, he's blocking all the damage from his south. Chain missing. Kazakh's nearly dead. He's then going to go aggressive on the Silas. Unfortunately, Tower's not been involved yet. He is going to get one kill. Maybe? There we go. So again, has look, Pantheon! Yeah, they three-man Dover Pantheon when his E is a, a damage like, you can't damage me. That was just a bad decision by the enemy team. But very well played by that Pantheon. Thumbs up to him. But that will open up the dragon because you know, obviously, the Kha'Zix was in the top side. And if you notice as well, this guy, Spam, cast Spam... So this Kha'Zix, I guess, took this guy's Zin. But as always, even if you main something, even if you one-trick something, you're not a very good player if you don't have a backup. Because, like, even this guy that has his name that has Kha'Zix in it is, you know, he's not it's not playing. He's playing Zin instead. He has a backup, which is what you need to do. That's a good league player. 
All right, so build-wise, again, worth noting, she went back and still no sustain. So very, a very aggressive playstyle coming out of this Syndra. You know, it might not look it, but in the background, which a lot of things in League of Legends are background, they're not always obvious, very aggressive. If I was laning against her, and I will say this is Master Games, and my MMR is Master again on my main account, so I could play against this person. They're on my same server, they're Master, so I very well could play against this person in the next few days. Um, if I saw this, no sustain, no anything, what would I be saying? Hey, jungler, come mid. And obviously, you can't always rely on your jungler coming mid. The jungler isn't there to, to win your lane for you. But, it, you know, if you just kind of type to them, hey, my lane opponent's not buying any sustain, very aggressive, we can punish. A lot of the time, the jungler, especially in high rating, will take that into consideration and gank. Uh, because, yeah, that's how you punish that type of playstyle is you, you gank it because they're trying to be kind of aggressive with getting away with not buying any sustain. Don't let that happen. All right, so Silas is in the area. He actually went for a flank play back here. This actually could be bad from Silas. Syndra misses a W, so the play is now not on. Um, she does hit that Q though, I think, so a little bit of a damage return. Silas steals the Syndra ultimate, which again is a pretty bad ultimate for him to steal. Um, you know, in actual, like if they were trading there, sure, it's the... It's the only one he could have taken, but Syndra Ultimate is not actually that strong with only three balls, which is its default, I, I believe. It gets strong when you like ult with six balls. Um, again, if you have no idea what Syndra does, basically her ultimate throws you know these balls around her. Those fly at champions, but her Q, where the ball is left on the ground, that then counts to her ultimate. So that so there's two balls there. Those will also get ulted to somebody. Um, but a really good Syndra player that holds the Q and can time it perfectly. Meanwhile, big play coming in top lane. But yeah, a very good Syndra. She's just going to abandon the play, which I think is a good idea. Um, a good Syndra will be able to get like a six ball ultimate. And that is where the strength comes in. Um, but a three ball ultimate hardly does any damage. So stealing it, Silas, he obviously doesn't get these balls that are left on the ground. It's not a very strong ultimate to steal. It's, it's like, you know, Darius ult. Stealing a Darius ult really sucks for Silas because you don't steal Darius passive. You just steal the ult. All right, so Silas didn't use the Syndra ultimate. So again, he still has that damage. And Silas in general does a lot of damage without the ultimate part of him. Um, but what I would maybe like to see from this Syndra is maybe a little bit more poking aggression on the melee champion. You know, try to land those Qs. Like, there we go. Bit more damage. That's what I want to see a lot more. He's got Corrupting Potion, but you shouldn't allow him just to have free reign of that Corrupting Potion. You shouldn't let him in the wave. Meanwhile, Karma executes. I guess she overstayed. No, she died here to minions. Interesting. Um, but yeah, that's what I potentially like to see. And again, I can speak of this because this, is, again, is the same MMR that I'm in. This is Master EU West. So I'm confident that I could say what the Syndra should be doing a bit more. And again, she is obviously going to be way better the Syndra than me of decision making. Then yeah, don't let the Silas have free reign of the lane because Silas is dangerous when you let him do anything he wants. All right, so this could be a play on. Yeah, so to me, that was relatively obvious that Kha'Zix is in the area because why would Silas ever want to take that fight? There is no reason for him to take that fight unless Kha'Zix was there. So to me, that was a bit obvious, but her in the moment, again, not enough damage. It did look like she ulted a bit too early. Maybe she just wanted to get the damage off. Maybe she thought she'd kill him. But Silas has got that magic um, the, the shield from his E. He's actually kind of tankier than a lot of people think. Um... So yeah, that, that to me was like, yeah, Kha'Zix was mid. So, so far, not amazing. But remember, and I just want to point out that in these commentaries, as you guys might know, we do POVs of players that do very well. So this game doesn't last that long. We might have another 10 minutes of this game. And this Syndra is only 1-1-0 one, one, so far with even farm in mid lane. And yeah, she's the highest farm in the game right now, but nothing crazy. Apparently, she gets crazy this game, and that's only in the next 10 minutes. So what I'm looking for is what happens. How? What, what's the, the decision? What? Where's the point? Is it a roam that makes it happen? Does she start killing him? Teleport, here we go. This could be it. Teleport into the bot lane. Janna gets caught. She will go down. There's one more kill for the Syndra. So there is a nice TP play. So both mid laners running teleport. Both mid laners actually making impacts on both sides of the map. So Silas has gone top lane. He just got a double kill, more or less. He also went TP last time and helped that play. Um, and then, oh, this could be another play. This could be on. 
Another big damage. Needs to land one more Q. Doesn't land it. Doesn't even go aggressive for it, which actually surprises me. But Misfortune was in the area. Maybe if she had ultimate, well, she doesn't. She's yeah, 15 seconds roughly away. She's going to get that stun. Bit of return damage. This is what I want to see. More damage output by the Syndra. She has to be careful, though, with everybody in the area. But weirdly... Very weirdly, the Misfortune going mid just opened up the tower of a bot lane and now that's dead. They should be very careful because now Silas Missing could be going down the river, which he is now going this way. But he has to be careful in a 2v1 situation if they just decided to do big damage. Unfortunate hook. Uh, very close to being dead. He is alive. Wow, that really good heal by Misfortune. Zin is on his way though. There's going to be a return happening. Zin's actually missing a bunch of damage. You can see the healing on him. Does get one kill. Pantheon misses his ultimate and it wouldn't have done anything anyway. Miss Fortune goes down. She gets one kill. Well, the Pantheon actually does. Syndra stun misses. She probably will go down regardless though. Pantheon gets that slow with his E and Kaiser will pick it up in the end. So again, that's good. Obviously good for blue team. But again, us focusing on the Syndra, that didn't do anything for the Syndra. And yeah, I just want to say that at the end of the game, I'm not going to give away, you know, how much score she gets, but the end of this game, this Syndra does the most damage in the game. Um, and so far, I don't think we've had evidence of her doing that yet. And yeah, she's done a bit of poke damage to a melee champion Silas, but not a, a crazy amount. Item build, as you can see, like we said, is standard, and I would presume that's going to be a Morella Gnomicon next. She is gaining a little bit of a farm lead. Karma might be overstaying here, but it does depend if that hook missed doesn't hit, unfortunately. Um, bit more farming, but yeah. So as I said, to me, Syndra is an amazing champion, weirdly, to farm with. Uh, she's just so smooth. Her mana costs actually aren't that much in the mid-late game. You know, your mana regen kind of covers it. Very close stun there. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should play Syndra just to get better farm scores, because that is one of my biggest weaknesses in the league. Big play may be happening in mid lane. Pantheon hits his Q. Uh, Bork Misfortune. Flash coming out by Pantheon. Very little damage, but they will pick up the kill in the end. Well done. Kha'Zix in the area. Thresh gets herself caught. Good hook. Will land into the stun. Ultimate probably wasn't needed, but just to secure, which is okay. And they will now gain momentum going in the mid lane, which is good. And again, the Karma. I don't think Karma Top is really a thing anymore. I haven't seen one in a while. Again, this guy is called SK Fenric. He could be a pro or a semi-pro or anything. Maybe he's not a top lane. I have no idea. But I personally haven't seen Karma top lanes in about a month. Uh, they've just kind of run out of their usefulness, I think. Uh, like top lane, yes, is an island lane. And it doesn't have a big impact on the meta at the moment. But generally, top lane is about winning the 1v1. That's what top lane has become. And Karma doesn't... It's a nothing pick. It, 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 yes, it can guarantee that maybe you won't lose really badly. And yes, you can poke out your opponent, but you're not going to have an impact. You're not going to just stomp your lane as Karma Top, uh, like a, a, an Aurelia Wood or a Renekton Wood or something like that. That's what you need to be picking. Or Fiora. Again, in my next few episodes of this, by the way, uh, I'm going to let the, the buff kind of go in maybe a couple more days. I want to check out a Fiora because I really think Fiora could be good in this meta of like, the 1v1 top meta. And she just got buffed. So that could be very interesting to see if a good Fiora player now can make a big impact. Big play happening in the bot side. Uh, people getting caught a little bit. Damage returned by Silas, as you can see, is very high. But Pantheon survives, which is great. Karma obviously doesn't really have much more damage. She's just tanky. So she will go down. <laughs> nice kill by Syndra. And as what you literally just saw there is what I believe is the biggest complaint of the Pantheon rework. It's not how little damage he does. You can flash his W now. Really nice hook coming in. Kha'Zix gets caught. He will go down. And now you're starting to see the Syndra gain momentum. Which is great. But yeah, you can fla you can legit flash Pantheon W. And it's it's worse than that, by the way, everybody. You can you can flash it, which is a point and click, obviously, stun. Point, well, stun. You can flash it. You also can dash it. So if Lucian dashes at the right time after the W, he doesn't get hit by it. But then also what is funnier, you can outrun it. And I'm not kidding. If you've got Ghost activated, or you're fast, or you've got Phase Rush... You can legit outrun Pantheon W. So he can jump to you and you can just move out the way and it doesn't hit. And it's a point and click. To me, of all the things I've seen, again, a lot of people think I'm very closed booked and closed doored when it comes to this. Or Huzz is never going to change his mind. I constantly research things. That's how I know this thing about Pantheon. I look on the Pantheon main subreddit. I, I keep trying to make my kind of knowledge of the champion, even though I'm not a big fan of it, I try to make it better. 
I read things about what mains feel, and the general consensus of what I see is mains aren't that happy. Uh, the, he looks amazing, and I'm never going to take away that. As an actual, like, artistic rework, it looks fantastic. Just the other part is a bit lackluster. But the good thing, and what I will agree with what the community has said, I think Riot will get him to a good place. I do think Pantheon, with this rework, will become useful, and I think he will have a bit more mid-game uh, mid, mid scaling. It's just going to take a while. But I also don't think he's going to be broken, which is good. Uh, so they're starting him very weak, and they'll buff him up. I think that's better than starting something very overpowered and nerfing it down. But yeah, so I think eventually he'll be great. All right, so big play happening, double kill by Zin. Again, the, one of the other good things, and again, this is what I'm not always negative about the stuff. Meanwhile, great play by Kaiser. Um, his E, Pantheon's E is very good. Oh, double sun coming, very aggressive play, gets one kill. Maybe she didn't even need to ult the Misfortune, she could have ulted the Karma. She will go for maybe the second, doesn't get it, very low health. Under, well, it was around 50 health apart from that. Very nice play by Syndra. There's the aggression from nowhere. So yeah, 6-1. She's tied with kills by the Kaiser. Farm-wise, she's the highest farm in the game apart from the Karma that has been on kind of her own island this game. So yeah, very well, very, or very good so far. And you're starting to see the aggression. So I did say, when would we start to see it? So it wasn't really lane phase. She didn't play that aggressive, but she was building aggressive. No sustain, nothing. But now we're starting to see it. She's got one completed item. She probably, she XP wise, she's level 12. So she's tied highest level in the game right now. So she's getting that confidence. And obviously, yes, she's a scaling champion. Mid to late game is Syndra. With some bullying capabilities in lane phase, depending what you're against. And we're finally getting evidence that she is like going for it now, which is great. So the build, again, I didn't look up the build before this game, but that is just the standard Syndra build. Luden's into Morello. Next item, again, I promise you I haven't looked into it if I had to guess. So it could be a Banshees. Now, the reason why I say Banshees, and that might surprise some people, because like, oh, why would you build defensive slightly? Well, one, it still gives magic resist. Secondly, it gives cooldown reduction, which is all good for Syndra. But secondly, the biggest weakness of Syndra is her lack of mobility and she can get caught. So if there's a... A random getting caught out of nowhere. Bing, big damage, good stun. She's going to pick up that kill. Dominating. Silas in the middle. Should turn to go kill him. Kazix in the middle. Doesn't get anything. Double kill by Syndra. That will open up Baron most likely for the blue team. 8 and 1 Syndra now. 169 farm. Is now the highest farm in the game, which is great. Um, but yeah, Banshees I think is a very good item on Syndra. For a champion that is so immobile can get caught out, having a spell immune so you can't get caught a little bit more I think is just a great idea. Boom, there is the legendary coming out of Syndra 9 and 1. And yeah, so basically what's happened is that she took it easy. She slow rolled kind of lane phase, but still played well, farmed very well. I think that is what this Syndra focused on more than anything, farm. And now the aggression is coming. Oh, she's going to go Zonyas instead. So I was expecting a defensive item next. Banshees, obviously. But she's going to go the Zonyas instead of the Banshees. Why that? Eh, possibly Zonyas could be better against Kha'Zix and Silas when they're all in on you. You're just Zonyas and just wait. Or if Misfortune Ultimate is on top of you, you can just Zonyas it and wait. So yeah, I, I agree with that too. But Banshees wouldn't have surprised me either. Um, but yeah, 911. 170 farm. Very big aggression play happening now. She's going to go for a flank play, potentially on these two. Though we have Vision of the Kha'Zix. He's going to walk this way. Stun, I would presume. Stun comes in. W lands with the ultimate. No joking around. Just kills him straight away. Again, definitely could have killed him without doing all that. She is getting flanked by his misfortune. Hits the knockback. Is going to just go for it. Ooh, this could be bad. So she used the, the stopwatch early uh, without denying the misfortune ultimate. But she does survive it by running out. And misfortune will also go down. So yeah, 10 one two now. Lots of damage coming out by the Syndra. And now, I guess you guys can see why she did the most damage in the game. Because she's just chunking everything. And yes, the Kha'Zix had a pretty bad game. But if you look at the enemy team comp, what could survive the Syndra? Like, they're really squishy. And in the meta right now, it's not really a tank meta, I don't think. There's occasionally tanks around, but not really. Syndra, as a big burst champion that scales to mid to late game. Yeah, honestly, could be quite good at the moment. And, by the way, the, again, the reason why really nice stun there... And the reason why I made this video, as you know, I've said, meanwhile the enemy team surrenders, he's not going to get that kill, nearly dies, is that she just got buffed. But there is the game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Nexus destroyed. Uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. This was a very clean Syndra. And again, just to kind of go over what she did, if you're looking to pick up Syndra, she didn't look that aggressive in lane phase, at least the early lane phase. She just played very, you know, 
um, safe for farm. And we're going to look at the damage. So that, there's the damage, by the way. So she does 17,000, way more than anyone else. Very much more than anyone else. Her lane opponent here does the most on the enemy team, and she's still miles ahead of them. Um, but yeah, so she played relatively safe in the early game. She focused farming, and then once she got a one completed item and then nearly a second completed item, then start to go aggressive on the squishy targets. Very clean. Like, nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing that we call, I guess, crazy, but just very nice. And that's what you need to be. Nice and consistent is the way to climb, and she'll climb, and that's why she's a good player, master player, one of the best Syndra players in the world. But that's going to be it. If you guys did enjoy, throw a like on the video. Again, just to remind you, I do take suggestions what champions we watch. Generally, I do keep with relevant ones, though. So ones that have just got buffed, ones that pro plays are, are doing. And the next one that I think I'll do is Fiora, because, again, I do think she's good in the meta, and she just got buffed. But feel free to let, uh, let me know in the comments what else you guys want to see. I'll be interested to know. And again, make sure they keep keep them relevant um, of something that is, you know, played at the moment. But that's going to be it. Like, subscribe, comment down below. See you guys next time. See ya.